Well, today I thought we'd go visit Tarpy Station, a.k.a. Clovis Visitor Center, but doors locked, even though the sign says open. Huh. Curious. Well, let's try it again, and, well, nothing doing. So, let's go around the other side, see what's happening. Looking in the window, I can tell lights are on, signs of life, the fan's going. But, in the meantime, let's check out this stone marker here. It gives a little bit of the history of Tarpey Station. Pulaski and some others built a railroad, blah, blah, blah. Tarpey was one of the original stations. Oh, I hear somebody hollering my name. Not really, but a nice lady came, heard me talking to myself, and let me in. Yeah! I figured that out. I read the sign eventually. I wanted to read The Rock before I came in. Apparently, all I had to do was knock to get let in, but now we're in, so let's check it out. This cool book here documents some of the life journey of Tarpey Station, which was originally down at Ashland and Clovis Avenues, and at one point just sat there in disrepair, and somebody got the idea they were going to move it over to Kearney Park and start a little old-time village, but that never worked out, so they moved it over here to this location on the corner of Clovis and Forth. And here we are at the corner of Ashland and Clovis. The northeast corner there is Tarpey Village. And there's Clovis running right next to us. And here is where the original Tarpey Station sat. Today it's part of the Old Town Trail and just another stop along the way to catch your breath and rest your weary bones. The lady at the Tarpey Station, uh, which is, I guess, the visitor center for Clovis, basically, she gave me a bunch of these brochures. Um, well, they had a whole display of brochures, so I, I took them. This one's super cool because it talks about the trails throughout Clovis, including, of course, the Old Town Trail, which is one I'm very interested in, which uh, was the original line for the San Joaquin Valley Railroad. Now a bike path. That's pretty cool. Uh, I picked up a little doodad on Clovis itself. Most of that I already know. Um, but this one, The Legend of Pulaski. Well, this was quite interesting because I've said before Pulaski was a bit of a swindler. And he kind of scammed the town. And, well, that's the story that I knew. Um, I never read anything about it in actual, you know, like, City of Clovis documentation on their website or whatever. But in Hank Johnson's book, The Railroad That Lighted Southern California, which is my main reference book for doing my research on the San Joaquin and Eastern Railroad, this job here, well, he clearly lays down the story of Pulaski swindling the town out of a bunch of money, walking away with like 50 grand in his pocket. So, I always thought it was funny. I always thought the city of Clovis was kind of like burying that part of the story because I thought that story is way more interesting than the real one. But, sure enough, here we are. In The Legends of Pulaski, the first thing they do is address that rumor. It says, in the movie, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, a newspaper reporter defends printing incorrect facts about historical events. Quote, when the legend becomes fact, 
print the legend, end quote. It goes on to say, in Clovis, the story of Marcus Pulaski and his railroad is often resurrected in one form or another. Like any good tale, the story has its various variations. Wow, there's a lot of activity tonight. Anyways, as I was saying, like any good tale, the story has its variations. But the gist of this, that a suave and smooth-talking carpetbagger, great term, named Marcus Pulaski arrived in town from parts unknown, charmed local farmers out of $100,000, built 25 miles of track, and left town with $50,000 still in his pockets, never to be seen or heard from again, it makes a great dramatic story. Yes, but, always a but. I like big butts and I cannot lie. But it's simply not true, says it here. Huh, mind blow, ba -ba 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 -ba. Anyways, it goes on to tell the story of Marcus Pulaski and <laughs> I don't even know what to think anymore. I mean, I've been living by this book, which says the exact story that this starts off with and says it's not true. So I'm kind of almost perplexed that he printed it in his book. So it turns out, I guess, fake news has always been a thing, probably since the beginning of time. Well, all that said, you know, I had a great visit at the Tarpy station. I got some information on Mr. Uh, Clovis himself got some stuff on the fruit trail, which we'll have to go check out, right? Uh, some more trail stuff, historic sites, and blah 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 about Clovis, Clovis Chamber of Commerce, a whole big fold out map, which super cool, all for free. So, I got a lot of reading to do, but I highly recommend checking out the Tarpy Station, the Clovis Tourism Visitor Center. You know, really nice lady there. And she's got a sweet face shield. This week on Van Eats with Greg, chicken and vegetable pot stickers. Three, six, seven. That's the most random number I've ever heard. Usually it's an even number, six or eight, seven. I actually think that might be the perfect number. All right, and we're going. You're gonna let these cook on the bottom for a little bit before adding the water and covering it because you wanna get a nice little crispy layer on the bottom, right? Yeah. In the meantime, so I'm gonna open up this job here. It's not perforated either. But we just take the scissors along in a little bit and we're good to go. All right, I can already hear them frying up in there. Nice little sizzle action. All right. How are these guys doing? See, already getting a little bit of color on the bottom. I'm gonna let those go for another minute or two before we move on. These are great deep fried. I mean, but what is it, right? I ate rattlesnake once, it was deep fried and it tasted delicious. All right, I can start to smell the dough cooking. So I got a little bit of water right here. I'm gonna turn this down to low. We're gonna, I'm gonna just gonna use a paper plate as a lid because I don't have one. I'm gonna put a little bit of this on the bottom. A little bit more, and we're gonna cover it up with this guy. I mean, this is about as rudimentary as it gets. Looking good, we got steam coming out. That's a good sign. 
Let's give them a check. It's been about five minutes. And, ooh, they feel nice and tender. Yeah, good to go. I'm gonna turn off the flame, turn off the gas. And we'll just let it cool down a little bit here. Nice. All right. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> Yeah, looks good. Nice little bit of color on the bottom, steaming hot. Good to go. And while the pan's still hot, where'd my water go? There it is. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of water, just just a little bit to wash it out. Get some paper towels. All right, we're good to go. Oh, these smell good, let me tell you. Okay, put that there. I'm gonna let that cool down for a couple of minutes. In the meantime, we got these guys ready to go. Look at that. And a little soy sauce, right? I'm just gonna pour the soy sauce on the side of the plate here. Oh, another little safety seal. That's nice. Keep it fresh. All right, a little bit of that on the side. Let's try them out. I always like to bite the top off. And then the soy sauce can really get in there. Great. I mean, things like this are so easy to cook in a van with a single burner. I mean, this isn't getting very culinarily crazy or anything, but I mean, it goes to show, pot stickers in your van, easy. If you can make it at home, you can make it in your van. All right, well, I'm gonna finish this up and uh, probably watch some videos and call it a night, but I hope you've enjoyed this video and any of the ones in the past. If you do, please don't forget, do me the favor, just like the video, subscribe to my channel. And if you really wanna get crazy, hit that bell so you know when my next video comes out. All right, take care, have a good night.